All right, Paul, tell me about drive chains. I know you, I can't remember if you or someone else tried to explain them to me before, but we know I'm not the most technically competent. Yes, I've heard that. Uh, I've heard you say that before. You explain it like I'm two. Often, um, well, yeah, like people say that, and they say like, "Where are your parents?" or something. But, but uh, <laughs> I mean, drive chain is this idea for an SPV proof that I came up with in November 2015. What's so an it's SPV very proof? An SPV proof is something that proves the the work, the proof of work, but not the validity of blocks. See, I have no and idea what you're talking the about already. SPV proof is the foundation of the sidechain idea. So okay. the sidechain is we we aren't going to look at we're not going to look at the validity. So we don't we have like a Zcash sidechain or whatever. We have like a bit Zcash. So we're going to copy all the technology from Zcash and but Bitcoin is not going to go through the effort of doing whatever wacky technology they're doing over there. We're just going to say, we're only going to look at, did you mine a bunch of blocks in the Zcash sidechain, so to speak? Okay. So we're going to have to go step by step on this. My limited understanding of sidechains is with what I know about Liquid. Yeah. Right? Right. This and, is unfortunate because that I, they have like decided to take this word in a different direction. So to me, a side chain, we have, we have the Bitcoin blockchain, and then we have this other blockchain, sure. and I can peg into my Bitcoin in, and I'm given liquid Bitcoin, and I can peg out. And then in this separate side chain, I can do a bunch of other shit. And the way I understand it, it's almost like a, another little block I can go and play in and do stuff. Yes. It just, it's almost like I've got two rooms, one room's Bitcoin and one room's liquid, and I've decided to pay some Bitcoin to go in the liquid room, and I play with liquid, and I can get my Bitcoin back and come out. Right. So, so is, the trick is, how does the coins come out? So you see, it's easy to go in. So like uh, here in New York City, they have the subway, they have the one-way uh, spinning thing. I don't know if you've uh, been on the subway. Yeah, we have <laughs> but, the circle line in London. Yeah. And so there's that, it's easy to get, it's, it's kind of like layer one Bitcoin is you're trapped in the subway forever. And it's easy to get out to go in, uh, to the layer two, you go up to the street layer, but you, what, you walk out the little turnstile thing, but you can't easily get back in. You have to pay and use the little kiosk. Right. You've got to give me some like real example. What does that mean with liquid? It's hard to get it. I can't just peg out? Well, in liquid, when, the, when, it, when you peg out, there's a multisig output and a bunch of people sign. Those people sign. So on layer one, the only thing that the Bitcoin network sees is... A multi-sig output. So you could make your own competitor to Liquid, you know, 10 minutes from now by just making 15 keys and creating a multi-sig address and then telling everyone that this is whatever. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that and that doesn't make any sense to me. Yep. What I'm saying is I know Liquid exists. I know I can peg into it. I know I can get Liquid Bitcoin. I can move that around with a little more privacy, a little bit faster. I know how that works and I know I can peg out. What I, I'm, I'm still not understanding what your criticism is. Well, um, the, it's, the, it's all about the way when you peg in and peg out. It's what you're sending it to in on layer one. That's what's actually happening. Uh -huh. So there's cosmetic with liquid. This is just like a multi-sig wallet. I'm, I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm not really sure that you actually do know what liquid is and what's happening when you when you peg in and peg out. It's I'm just like, I won't know yeah. technically, but I. But I'm a standard user of of what yeah. of what most of my listeners will be. Most people listen yeah. to this. They don't know how multisig really works. They don't understand the you know the engine behind Bitcoin. Most of them buy Bitcoin and they send it to an address and they keep it there. And then sometimes they send it to another address. And some of them maybe go and create a Lightning wallet and they send some Bitcoin to have some Sats. And some of them may even create a multisig wallet with something like Casa. And some of them, really advanced, will run a node. But most people don't understand what's going on. They're just sending stuff to addresses. So why does why does this matter to them? Well, okay. One reason is if the fifteen keys are, are compromised, eleven of them in this case, that person will just take all the money out. So it'll be like a Celsius style catastrophe. So your criticism is really the risk around the federation. 
Uh, well, this is the main difference between what I did, which is now BIP 300, and the, the Federation is a group of people who are the custodians of the money, and you hope that they choose to give you your money back, and maybe you have really good reasons to believe that they will give you your money back, but in BIP 300, there's just a, a transparent process that only involves the miners. Anyone can become a miner or leave the group of miners at any time. As you know, there's no like fixed list of miners or can if the, all of the if all of today's miners were killed by an asteroid or something then there would be new miners without anyone having to update anything or but that's not true if the liquid uh functionaries all die or they all get whatever something happens to them then the money they, it won't be possible to get the money back although in liquid's case there is a a secondary multi-sig fail safe but there's that's a whole other story because at one point they realized that they had done it wrong and they had there were four block stream keys that could be used not in an emergency. So this is like a complicated other detail. Okay, but with the, liquid that probably won't people won't be interested in. In terms of my experience of moving, say, into your drive chain, does it have a name like liquid? No. Well, th this is a process for creating the the drive. Three hundred means there's there could be two hundred fifty six slots, and each could be its own. Side chain, and then you could do it again and get 256 more, or you could have side chains of side chains. Okay. So this is a process for adding and removing decentralized side chains that have no fixed list of owners. Okay, I get it. So this is okay. You're proposing a way for uh, side chains to be created, not yeah. the creation of the side chain itself. Yeah, when you create liquid, you need to you need to pick the 15 people or the yeah. 15 keys. But with this, you would not. Okay, but with this. If you created a sidechain using BIP300, does somebody still peg in and have a different asset and still peg out? And get yeah, the contact? user uh, sends the coins in to like a little box, basically, and the sidechain software recognizes that as a deposit. Okay. Over there, the sidechain software is like an altcoin, except without the coin. Um, you can do whatever you want over there. So you could use Zcash, Ethereum, whatever. We'll come now, back to that. But yeah. when I go in, am I given like something that is identical, like identical in replication? Like a liquid Bitcoin is basically a Bitcoin? Yes, that's the idea. I mean, of course, the freedom, with this you have the freedom to do any idea you like, uh, good or bad. So someone could have a sidechain that was a terrible design and where it ate the coins and refused to tell you where they were or give them back. Okay. So, but of course, no one would do that in practice except as a mistake. So, where whereas with Bitcoin and Liquid, we have these two rooms I can go between. You're just creating a process that anyone can come and build a room that yes, attaches can, to it. It's like an elevator. I can conjure a new floor or something. Yeah. yeah, and one could be a very nice safe room and one could murder you. Yeah, one okay. could just, you open the door and you just fall out, out of the building. building. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm going to come back to that. So, your side chain doesn't have a 15-person multi-sig. So what Correct. does it have instead? instead? And yes, you've got to imagine I am the dumbest fucker you will meet. <laughs> so just take me slowly, step well, by step. Okay. Uh, the uh, metaphor is that you put the coins into like a little box. Yeah. So there's bit three hundred. There's two hundred fifty six slots. So each would be its own box. But like we're just talking one side chain at a time. You put the why two hundred fifty six? Well, because feverish. that's a, a byte can count up to that, and okay. uh, you have to refer to. You need some way of referring to each side chain, so it would be more. Overhead. There's really in practice, there's no limit because you could have side chains of side chains, or you could do the thing again. I just don't think that they'll be anywhere near. I, I could be totally wrong about this, but I just don't see how many like viable blockchain designs do you see? You know, like you got like Bitcoin, like Monero, and you got like ten but, other things. But if uh, if you if Bit three hundred was merged into Bitcoin. Yes. What stops one person quickly going to take an over two hundred fifty six? Well, slots? there is a. It is the process of claiming the slot takes a little bit of, of time. So there's like a bib nine style two week, activation thing to take the slot, and you can also very slowly overwrite the slot. So the bib three hundred has all these rules to manage that kind of thing. But but okay. So but say I go and claim all two hundred fifty six slots uh, straight away and. Wait my two weeks. Do I suddenly have all the slots and there's none left for anyone else? Well, the the miners have to like like I said, there's like a miner act thing, like acknowledgement thing. So you need like ninety percent miners to thumbs up your thing. So oh, okay. That's the the process involves more is more miner involved. Okay. In okay. Mine. So each so each block they get to like do 
affect the, the outcome in a very small way. That's and basically the design. So are you essentially pitching your side chain to the miners? You're saying, this yes. is my side chain? Yes. And is it a bit like, you know, when a, a soft fork happens? Yes. And you get miner signaling? That was, because this idea is from long ago in 2015, before any of this was even controversial. This used to just be the way everything was done. That's obviously speaking a little too broadly, but this never used to be like a big uh, who controls Bitcoin controversy. That's all just uh, fallout from the block size war, Sacred 2X. So this used to be a very uncontroversial and kind of normal thing. Well, we'll come back to that. Yeah. But I'm interested in this. So you release, the code is released, but bit 300 is activated. Now, the pitch to the miners, to be clear, is like, you, this will either like improve the price of Bitcoin and or improve the total transaction fees collected. So there's a rational reason to expect that miners would be, they would at least have some interest in making sure that they they give the right decision. How does it get pitched to them though? Is it like a BIP? Uh, I think there's no, uh, well, these are like, uh, these details are, uh, I have plans for, the, I actually invented something else called Coin News, which is a completely different cosmetic thing for displaying op return data in Bitcoin, which is a, it's a very interesting idea. And it doesn't involve any hard or soft fork or any kind of code changes to the consensus of Bitcoin at all. And it's just a cosmetic thing where when you open the full node, it shows you like who paid the op returns. Um, with that, that it sorts them by like fee rate and you can also have them like sorted by other kind of tags and stuff that you can put in so you can have like all the english language ones in one column and all the uh, japanese ones in like a different column or something so i had this other thing that's uh that i just did for fun and is in the software that i run and i would think they could do that they could do that but they even if you didn't have something like that in the software someone could just make a very conspicuous transaction that stands out by paying a, a larger fee basically do that kind of idea in a kind of like a you know with duct tape and uh, yeah but know. like when a when a when a bip is activated when there's a soft fork is activated it's a whole thing like everybody knows what it's about yes. you get to read the but don't you think this is part of the problem though well i'll come i'll come back to that because okay. you, the thing you just we're coming back to a lot of things well luckily you've got a pen there yeah well like the, so the last thing you explained i think you explained it like you think i have any idea what you're talking about and i don't and this i don't quite I, new thing it was, oh, no no it's, you know it, what op returns though i have no idea what op return is well people put Do messages you? uh it's the message that the miners put in the block when they no, that's a Coinbase. But uh, okay. but op return, anyone can make a transaction. They can put like this. This is used by lots of different people, and you can put what it is. Is it's a part of the transaction that you can just prune out. You can just cut. So it's it's something that will never be spent. So they put what's called a zero value output. Okay. So basically, what it is is like a memo field and a check or something. But what what I'm trying to get to so is people write stuff like Bible verses and wedding. Uh, wedding vows and people put like funny little things. Oh, I've seen I've seen things yes. like when certain blocks of mine they put messages in. Yes, as well. yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, 